March or something like that. <laughs> I did, did he? I found that behind the thing. Beautiful. Hey, happy new year. You're still Christmas Eve, my dear. Come and join us. Good stuff. Um, yeah, if I can get your attention, that would be great. Um, I wrote, I have a few. That's okay. Finish, finish. I'm sorry. I can't remember her name. Anna. Anna. Do you live over by Duncan Manor? In it. No, she, in it. Oh. Pardon me? Okay, thank you. It's answered. She didn't know you lived it where you live. In Duncan Manor, that's it. I want to welcome you. Um, I am um, welcome everybody. I, I prefer to use be blessed this year. It's just a personal, I, I have nothing against the happy new year. It's just because some people uh, during the time of the year are not very happy, but always blessed. So that's why I like to use my own language. Uh, this 50 to 70 toots for the Jewish calendar. They go from creation. So we are in the year 5,782. <laughs> And I don't miss the message tomorrow because I will address the message about what's going on in the year and how we travel the time as a church and so on. But I want you to know that I am excited to see you back and to um, notice your endeavor to carry on with you. I want to thank Sylvie because look around and go to the washroom. It's clean. Sylvie committed to wash the floor with uh, water, you know, not just a dry mopping. She corrected all the scratch on the wall and uh, tried to make uh, the place palatable for you and so on. So I'm delighted to start Philippians today. Thank Good you. stuff. Now she needs to do the Holy of Holies, which is my office. <laughs> and I don't like it when she does it because you, you don't find anything after that. Everything is properly placed, so I don't, that's why I don't find anything. <laughs> Beautiful. So carry on, pass the word around, and so on. I'm not going to make more further announcements except for one. We are in 2023. I want to thank you for your support of the last year, which you did in 2020, 2022. You will be receipted accordingly, and don't forget the 2023. Uh, I say that simply because that you know that the credit card was too high for you in the January and February, and it does affect the um, donation of the ministry, but I rely on God that you have spent uh, in a reasonable way and so that you will be able to carry on with us by faith and so on. I also covet your prayers because I did uh, gave, give, did give proposals around an eight-week class offered to churches in their facility to enhance their discipleship program. I gave the uh, the, 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 the proposal to five churches, so pray around. It's a class, eight-week disciple class, serious with journaling uh, and based on a book. So I would like your prayers for me to be able to break through and present the discipleship program in different churches around because you guys, you do not have in your churches discipleship program right now. And... Uh, you won't probably for the next 10 years or so. So I think it's expedient to uh, offer to our young Bible and college people uh, solid classes on discipleship and so on. Why don't we start with a word of prayer and then we carry on in the book of Philippians. Try to remind me, uh, Debbie, it's on at the break. I'm going to shut it down and restart again because I did not use my cam for a long time, but it's fixed. I needed two batteries and they were still in Japan, stuck there because of COVID and so on. I'm blessed to have you. God bless you. Let's uh, keep silent and pray. Father of grace, we thank you for gathering again as we have turned the year. In a physical way, in our mind, we are in 2023, you know this, that approximately 2,000 years ago, in 23 years, you came incarnate to redeem mankind for those who place their faith in you. Father, we believe that you will come back, but we no, do not necessarily behave 
as if you would come back this afternoon or right now. Forgive us only to an extent, if you want, for the complacency in which we are in right now. Believing your second return soon, but at times maybe doubting also. Anyway, I would like you to bless me and to bless the study that we will undertake and bless the people in front of me, those who are listening to that kind of information, touch them. It's a wealth of information, again, that will be passed down for the book of Philippians and make it meaningful for us, Father, on an, in, on an individual basis. We give you thanks, dear Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Keep me accountable. You need a pen? Yeah, my pen ran out. I can, do you have? Good. All right, I try to commit for the new year not to go too fast and so on and to give you time to note the information. So welcome to the book of Philippians. You can make your note on that. We begin on January the 7th and so, and so on. That's where I would like you to be, basically for a quick moment. On the, This is just a copy of what will be done today. I don't know if we will have time to go through everything, but this is on your outline. By the way, I don't have my own outlines, but there is some here. Let me say a few words and be in Philippians chapter 1. We're not going to study the text today. I'm going to give you all the background concerning that. Concerning the authorship, capital A, who wrote the book, it's undebatable. It's very strong belief since the church father, fathers. It's Paul who wrote it. And it counts for both the internal evidence... When I say to you internal evidence or evidences, it's within the book, and it counts also for the external evidences of the church father and the study of the Pauline writings and so on. The scriptures are verse 1, Paul and Timothy, bound servants of Christ, 1a, so he wrote the book. And another place that you can be sure that he wrote the book it's if you turn in chapter 3, verses 4 to 6. Chapter 3, verses 4 to 6, where he gave basically a description of himself. It's included in the book. Although I myself might have confidence even in the flesh and so on, he talks about his own person, so there is no doubt at all that Paul wrote the book. There is also in the book the mention of Timothy in the, chap in the verse 1 of chapter 1. The mention of Timothy. He mentioned it right here in chapter 1 verse 1 where he says, Paul and Timothy, bound servants of Jesus Christ to all the saints in Christ Jesus, who are in Philippi, including the overseers, circle overseers, and deacons. Just the fact that he mentioned Timothy is also evidence in the book because of the close association that Paul had with Timothy, because of the close association that Paul had with Timothy in the book of Acts. In the book of Acts. And like I said to you, beloved, as far as external evidence is concerned, church fathers like Constantine and so on ascribe the book of Philippians to Paul. Another thing that I would like you to circle in verse 1 is in Christ, to all the saints in Christ Jesus, circle in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus, it's very Pauline. Not exclusively from Paul, but Paul uses the expression in Christ or Christ in you very often. So it shows once again that the author of the book of Philippians is from Paul. 
you want to note what I will say right now. In addition, the word I, the pronoun I, in this short letter, is mentioned 52 times. I, I, I. And from Paul, it's not a lack of humility, self-centeredness, but it's in the fact that he had a special relationship with the Philippians. Paul had a very, very special relationship to the Philippians. He was close to them and they were close to him. That's why it's an important piece of information. Out of the 13 books that Paul wrote, out of the 13 books that Paul wrote, the letter to the Philippians is the most personal letter. And that's why the word I, 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 speaking of himself to them. You might have read some comments in a study Bible type of thing. But the book of Philippians is the most personal letter written by Paul. And so on. That counts for capital A, the authorship. The only, the only thing that I would like to show you in a moment, I will mention again the date of the writing. And I just want to show you that Philippians is the church age. You know that, but I want to repeat it. It's not ma named here because it's the figure seven again. The seven churches that we have in the book of Revelation is just to make a round number of perfection. Okay? That's why some are missing. You don't have Philippi here. Okay, he goes with Ephesus, but not Philippi. Why? He doesn't want to, uh, to have 200 churches. He chose, John wrote seven as re re representing the whole, like the, the, the menorah behind you. So the church, the, 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 the epistle of Philippians 61 or 62. I forgot to write 62 here. Right after the dispensation of the law, of course, the church of Philippi, was founded in the first century corresponding the year so it's part of the church age i just want to show you that so that's why now we are here in the time of the apostasy but it's the same people we are in the year 2023 the letter fits for us if we would if, if if we would be close to paul do you understand this because we close to? ephesians because look at the year, 61 or 62. I just told you I forgot to write the 62 here. We fit right here in the apostolic time. I just wanted you to, to know that. Do you have any questions concerning A? Tell me if I said something that, that, I, that I said something too quick and if you would like me to repeat information. What I like the most before you ask is the fact to know that this is the most personal letter of Paul to a church. Okay, Duke, same format. Nothing is new with me. We go in depth like this and we carry on and all of a sudden we're done. We're going to do Colossians after that. Capital B, I'm changing the slide again. Capital B, what's the historical background here? Slow down, Francois. The city of Philippi were the first European church planted by Paul. Basically, it was the first U European church ever. Philippi is right here, close to Macedonia and Thessalonica, first and second Thessalonians. But the church of Philippi was the first planted in Europe, which is modern-day modern day Turkey. All the churches before Philippians were in Asia Minor. All the churches planted by Paul previous to Philippi, to the Philippians, they were in Asia Minor, which is basically now Turkey. Not Macedonia, Turkey. I made a mistake. Asia Minor was Turkey. 
If you have time, pardon me? Philippi in Europe, not in Asia Minor. Okay, I made a mistake because I said that Philippi was in Asia Minor or the opposite. No, that's it. If you go to Turkey, you're going to Asia Minor. But Philippi is in Macedonia. Yes. And Macedonia now is? Europe, part of Europe. I cannot. Yes, yes, yes. Correct, you're correct. Okay? Modern day Greece, correct. Turn with me in Acts chapter 16 for a moment and look at the map again that I put on the board here. Acts chapter 16, verse 19. Acts chapter 16, verse 19. And it says this A vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man of Macedonia, look, Macedonia, it doesn't matter if you don't have it all. A man of Macedonia was standing and, appe and appealing to him, Paul, and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. And then he will at 69. What did I say? 69. I'm rusty a little bit, like uh, we all are, I guess. Okay, 69, come to Macedonia and help us to establish this in the regions of Greece, the proximity of it, and so on. And putting the writing of it between, we put the writing of the epistle between 61 and 62 AD. 61 and 62 AD. My next comment concerning the historical background, you can make your note on this. Although his time, Paul's time was very limited in Philippi, the church that he planted was very well organized. How do we know this? Read the text with me. To all the saints in verse 1b, to all the saints in Christ Jesus who are in Philippi, including overseers and deacons. So it proves that the church was biblically organized. It doesn't write to a board. Boards are not biblical. And the proper leadership of a church is elders, overseers, and deacons. That's the same thing as elder. An oversight, is, I'm going to give you the word in a moment. Basically, the elders are in authority in the church. And the deacons help the elders. And this is a model that I'm trying to imitate here on Sunday morning, but I'm not capable. God did not allow, allow it to happen yet. Because I do not have elders here. So it shows that the church was well spiritually organized. So this is important for you to know. Just give me a sec. This is important to make a note, not to criticize the church at large and those on YouTube also, but to understand that things can be made biblically. And the biblical leadership format from the Bible, what Paul, as an apostle of the Age of Grace, was in planting was elders and deacons. Shaman? Why do we have the word bishops? Because this is the same Greek word to an extent. I will I will give you the I will give you the Greek words in a moment of time. Is it the same words as elders? Yes, I will give this so, so sometimes later, just give me time, I will provide you with the Greek word for this. Okay? Okay, so I just want you to know that, that there is a way to do things biblically. That's all I want to say. And sometimes I'm accused that to speak in a way that I'm the only one that possesses the truth. I will never do such a claim. But as the year goes on and on and on and on, we need to strive to be biblical. Actually, it's minimal of our behavior as Christians. That's all I have to say about it. Capital C, purposes. Here it's going to be slightly longer. 
purposes. Just want to reach the image that, yeah, purposes. Do you have any question about the proper leadership, despite the fact that Paul spent not much time, that's what he did with Timothy. He explained to the people how the church should be conducted as over against the temple and the law. And now he writes to the Philippian people and he does include the leaders of it. And you find the qualifications of the elders and the qualifications for deacons in the book of Timothy. You never find the qualifications to be a board member. Why? Not biblical. That's simple. The purposes, the main purpose of the letter is to encourage the reader to be in joy or rejoicing. The main purpose of the letter of Philippians is to encourage the beloved to be joyful and to rejoice. That's the primary purpose, and that's why we Christians call the Philippians the epistle of joy. Correctly. It's correct to do so. You love it to be joyful and rejoicing. In in all situation I'll come back to that for sure. How do you spell epistle? Pardon me? How do you spell epistle? Epistles. Good question. Sometimes I take for granted epistle or epistles simply means this sister I use the term interchangeably all the time because yeah. there is a joke people do a joke sometimes let's have fun they say that the epistles are the wives of the apostles <laughs> have you ever heard that <laughs> it's a, everybody knows the joke but never nobody's bold enough to say like <laughs> Kevin does how do you write it or what's the meaning of it so the epistles were not the wives of the apostles. It's a good joke, but it's not the meaning of it. Have you ever heard that? No. How come? If somebody had to keep them in line, so that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> it is emphasized. What is emphasized? Joy or rejoice and so on. Chapter 1, verse 25. Make your notes because I don't have a slide for that. I'm going to read them. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with you all for your progress and joy in the faith. And that's good for you. 125. John? No. 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 Philippians. Yeah. Philippians. 125 of the book of Philippians. Now it's your turn to be rusty. Yeah. yeah. 125. I want the last part where he says here, um, 25 for all your pro uh, progress and joy in the faith chapter 3 verse 1 finally my brethren rejoice in the Lord chapter 4 verse 4 rejoice in the Lord always again I will say rejoice 4-4 four, four. And make a note for yourself, chapter 4, verses 10 to 13. Chapter 4, verses 10 to 13. So, the main theme, if you want to, or not theme, but one of the purpose, it's to encourage the believer to rejoice in all circumstances, because remember, he is in prison. I'll come back to it. Number two, another purpose as to why Paul wrote to the church of Philippi, it's to relieve their anxiety. He doesn't want uh, them to be stressed out, to relieve anxiety because of his circumstances. This is very kind of Paul. We don't see that anymore very much. He wants to relieve their anxiety. Why? Because he is in prison right now. The first imprisonment. 
And we will study it out in chapter 1, verses 1 to 30 next week. We will go through his circumstances in chapter 1, verses 1 to 30. What I just gave you was the second purpose out of four. That was the second one. First one, what was it, Sylvie? Rejoicing always. Second one, he wrote to not to cause a stress on them, to relieve their anxiety. It's, that's the characteristics of Paul. I love it. Something to imitate from the pastoral care. Number three, or the third purpose, is to thank them. He wants to thank them for their financial assistance. He wants to say thank you for their support, like I do. Because I committed my life to Christ as a disciple this way, without uh, boasting and so on, to do everything that I do by faith, like Paul da does. When I read these things after salvation, almost 30 years ago now, that's what I wanted to do. I should have calculated the cost of it a little bit more. Maybe I would stress less. But it's too late. I have, God has invented so much in me that I need to carry on. But in this world, as soon as I lose my focus, an example, Sophia going to school. I went to Duncan Christian School, kindergarten, to investigate their kindergarten plan. It's $6,000. I don't have it. So I changed my mind. She cannot go there. It's too expensive. So it's, it's the choice of a person that decides to step out without a steady wage and teaching the word. What, whose number? You can pick it up. There is a phone going. Yeah. Good. That's fine. No, that's okay. It doesn't bother me because it's on vibration mode. That's good. I'm sorry. You see, that's, that's the point. That's why I want to do classes on discipleship to encourage the younger body of faith, men in particular, not dismissing women, but to consider stepping out on faith so that this ministry will not die. But it will die. I'm not a prophet. But if I look at the result of it, this ministry will die. If I stop tomorrow, I have nobody to take over. Simply nobody. <coughs> because of the pressure of this world system. So that's why. Why was it with this? To thank them for their financial assistance. And that's what I did at the beginning. Thank you for what you have done. And thank you also for what will be done. I will come back in this epistle. Number four. Fourth purpose is to warn them against the false teachers again. To warn them against the false teachers. Beloved, beloved. What year was the letter written? 61 or 62. And there was false teacher. How much more? Here. Vancouver Island is packed. Why do we do what we do? To impart to the people solid truth that the people which are you and I may discern what is being said and what's being done. And also, on the fourth again, to exhort them, that may be number five, but I put it on the number four, to exhort, them, to exhort them to be in harmony. Because he discern a bit of disunity, and he wants to deal with the problem yesterday. Today, we discern disunity, and we swipe the problem under the carpet. Paul wants to deal with it yesterday. And he will deal with that the same way.
capital D, the theme of the epistle. It's a bit redundant here, or repetitious. The theme of the book, Rejoice in the Lord. That's, if there is one person in the room that needs to listen to this, it's me. But I think I'm not too bad. I'm a serious concerning the things of the faith. I'm zealous. But that doesn't mean that I, I do have joy because I explain to you too often that I know my destiny. Upon death, if I collapse of a heart attack here tonight, nobody will make me doubt about where I'm going, despite my no, sinful nature. We won't nature. try to resuscitate you. Pardon me? We won't try to resuscitate Please you. Please never do that, otherwise I will come back with uh, cowboy boots. <laughs> and cowboy boots I have a tendency to be very sharp at the end of it. So read between the lines. No resuscitation, please. Thank you so much. <laughs> she will applaud probably. He's, he's in with the Lord. 4-4. Four, four. Okay. It's, go to 4-4. Four, four. Chapter 4, verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I will say, rejoice. Despite the persecution that we go through, I need to learn this myself because I'm exposed to lots of persecution, comments good and bad. I need to give thanks for that. And you know what? Honestly, I have not reached that point yet. Shame on me. In fact, the word for joy or rejoice or some connate of that word. Do you know what is the word connate? Some derived rooting of joy and rejoice, like happiness and so on. V words that are connate, having the same root, are found 16 times in the book, in four chapters. We call it connate words. Recognition cognate of the same type. 16 times. 16 times. You don't seek for joy, uh, joy and rejoice. Cognate, you know, be at peace in something that resembles, that falls into the same category. So that's the theme. What is the theme of the epistle? Rejoice. Know it by heart. You don't need to go back there. It's easy. Rejoicing. We pause for a quick coffee and we come back with special points. <laughs>